Hi everyone, welcome to this new session of CFA level 2. Today we will be covering the remaining portion of third reading from fixed income which is bonds with embedded options. So in the previous session of this reading we have already covered the details of how to do valuation of callable bonds, putable bonds and some other details specifically related to those bonds, how they react to interest rate volatility and option adjusted spreads. In this session, we will be covering the remaining portion of the reading, starting with the duration and convexity. So let's get right into it. Now, duration and convexity are two concepts that you have already covered at level one. And as such, level two doesn't really have too much additional to throw at you, aside from some theoretical explanations. So let's start with duration itself. At level one, if you remember, duration was a measurement of how a bond reacts to the change in interest rate sort of measuring how risky a bond is. So duration would give us an idea that if a yield change by a certain percentage, how much would the bond change? So as such calculation of duration, the formula was bonds value when the duration is decreasing minus bonds value when the duration is increasing divided by twice into bond value at a base level so we'll establish a base level and then we'll increase and decrease by the same amount multiplied with change in yield change in yield was something that was given in basis point now you've already done this at level one multiple times the calculation is exactly same so that's the good news that there is nothing technical in duration at level two in fact duration by itself doesn't really have anything new to offer at level two because all there is to know about duration is already done at level one. This exact formula works just fine. The only difference is that at level two, we are not valuing the bonds using some sort of you know time value of money calculation. Rather, we are using a proper binomial calculation. We are still using time value of money, but now the bigger portion of our calculation is the binomial tree. How exactly do you apply this in a binomial tree? Now, this is one of those things that if you look at your format of the exam, the chances of you getting information to calculate this entire thing is very less because this question by itself could end up taking 10 minutes. You'll have to construct three binomial trees, do the calculations of present value for all three, and then you can calculate duration. So as such, having a question like this, which takes up 10 minutes just for one answer, very unlikely in the exam. Rather, knowing the process is going to be very useful because so far we have done the binomial tree number of times within these sessions. If you are comfortable with the binomial tree, what I'm about to explain would make sense immediately. So let's look at how this is to be done. I'm just going to make a hypothetical binomial tree. Don't confuse it with calibrated ones or anything. This is just for the sake of this example. So let's say you have rates 5%. 8%, 7%, 10%, 9 and 8%. Let's say this is sort of the binomial tree. Now, don't bother with what spot rates are calibrated or not. Ignore all of that. Let's say this is the tree I have. If I do the valuation of a bond using this, this would give me book value base. Now, if I need duration, at level 1, what we used to do is we used to change the yield by a certain percentage. We used to first increase it. So let's say the yield is already 5%. I increase it by 1%, 100 basis point, make it 6 and see the value. Then I decrease it by 100 basis point, make it 4 and see the value. I'm going to do the same thing here as well. The only difference is I'm going to change everything by plus 1. And then I'm going to change everything by minus one. That will give me the value of book value when the yield is decreased and book value when the yield is increased. So the process as such is fairly simple. The only thing that makes this slightly less important or less likely to be asked in the exam is the sheer mechanical nature of it. This doesn't have any sort of technical calculation, but for just one duration, this is, by the way, effective duration because we are changing the rates throughout the entire tree. This is effective duration. So the tricky part here is just the length of time it would take because you will first be given a binomial tree. You'll have to figure out what the value is. 
Then you have to create a binomial tree where all interest rates are increased. You'll have to calculate value there. That becomes book value if the interest rates increase by a certain value. Then you'll have to reduce all rates by 1% or whatever the percentage is you want to take. That will give you book value minus. Then you have all these values. It's just a matter of plugging in. So as such, just knowing the process, in my opinion, is going to be good enough for your exams. You don't really have to go all in in practicing these questions because effectively, if you understand binomial, this should already make sense to you. You shouldn't be confused as to how this would be done in the real world. So this is the discussion about duration, effective duration. We also have something known as key rate duration. Now, if I talk about a graphical representation, the term structure could be something like this. So as the time progresses, this is my yields. Now, normally when we have this kind of a term structure for any interest rates, the effective duration that we just discussed, this measures how much my bond is going to change if there is a parallel shift. So if the entire curve shifts parallelly upwards or downwards, which means throughout all durations, the interest rates are changing. But sometimes in the real world, we often come across situations where, let's say this is your base term structure and the term structure is sort of going this way. So in the long run, it is not really being affected. So as at higher time maturity, it is more or less the same. But at lower maturities, there is difference. The movement is of non-parallel nature. For that, we use key rate duration. So key rate duration is again measuring how sensitive my bond is to changes in interest rate, but not all interest rates. Interest rate at a specific time interval. Now, key rate duration, again, this is one of those calculations which requires proper computer programs to do. So as such, calculating key rate duration, not really relevant for your syllabus. What is relevant is interpreting. So I'll just make a small table. Let's say you have three bonds. You have a 2% coupon bond, 4% coupon bond, and 6% coupon bond. And then you have certain key rate durations given to you for two years, for five years, and let's say 20 years. So short term, medium term, long term. And then the question would give you some information. Let's say, let's say minus 0 0.02. This might be 0 0.75. And let's say this is 7. It might give you similar information. Let's say this is 0 0.3, 0 0.4, and 3. And over here we have, let's say, 8, 0.9, and 0 0.02. So you could get information like this. For key rate duration, knowing the meaning is very important that what it represents, what kind of duration it is. It is a partial duration or one-sided duration, which means it's covering the non-parallel shift of the term structure. But the second part of what is relevant for the exam is knowing how to interpret it. The question could give you this kind of information. So this would be given. How these are calculated, not relevant for you. Once you have these, the next thing is question could ask you information that which of these bonds is most sensitive to long-term interest rate changes. Effectively, key rate duration means how sensitive my bond is to the interest rate changes at a particular maturity. So for 2% bond, the duration is 7 for 20 years in comparison to 0 0.02, 0 0.75 for 2 years, 5 years, which means this 2% coupon bond, this is not as volatile with respect to interest rates in short term or even medium term as it is for longer term maturities, which means if the long term interest rates change even by a small amount, that is drastically going to affect my bond because my bond is more volatile in context of long-term interest rates. Conversely, for 6% coupon bonds, the bigger volatility comes in the short term. 
So these values could be provided to you and you could get some theoretical questions where you just have to interpret as to which bond is more volatile at a given maturity. So that is all which is relevant for key rate duration. Now aside from this, you also have a small discussion in your syllabus about the convexity. Let's cover convexity as well. 